I, um, I thought I'd do a quick video about the rebuilding of my Amal Concentric Mark I carb, or should I say the Anal Eccentric Mark I. Uh, it's been slowly driving me nuts, but the reason why it's driving me nuts, it's a simple carb, is because I haven't bothered, I hadn't bothered to learn how it works. And actually, um, I'm starting to get it, so I thought I'd, I'd share the love with some of you guys. A lot of you guys will, learn, will know a lot more about this than me, but hey. Anyway, so the carb itself is 38 years old, but it came off a bike that's only done 1,500 miles from you. So I knew the carb itself, body-wise, won't be worn. But the components inside were the old components. They weren't ethanol resistant and they needed to be changed. So I stripped down the carb. I cleaned it in an ultrasonic bath for half an hour. And now I used compressed air, blew it all over to get all the crap out. Uh, I didn't get it all out and I'll explain why you've got to be careful later. But anyway, the components we've got, we've got the, the, float, the float bowl, we've got the float spindle, which is the original one, didn't need to replace that. We've got a new float needle valve, which comes with the ethanol resistant kit. We've got the ethanol resistant float, which is the one in black color. I actually like this float. Why? Because these steel tangs on it can be bent. And you see I put a slight bend in them, which is what you do to adjust the float height. On the original white floats, apparently these tangs, they're very hard to bend and they're springy. So if you need to adjust the float height, what you've got to do is to heat up this bowl and to then raise or lower this brass needle seat, which can be a bit of a faff actually, well, I, I presume it is. So this new method of bending the tabs or the tangs seems to be quite good. Also with the kit, you get a new throttle stop screw, which is this one here with a flat bottom with a new O-ring as well. And you also get a new pilot adjust just in air screw. I gotta admit, I'm quite pissed off by this screw because this screw has been in the carb for the last 10 days and already it's starting to show some signs of deterioration and, um, and corrosion. So I think the cadmium or nickel plating on here is absolute crap. With a kit, you also get a new filter which is fitted here, new gaskets, obviously main body gaskets as well, flange gaskets and new O-ring. At the same time, because the carb was out, I thought bugger it, and I put in there uh, a new jet holder, a new main jet. The standard main jet fitted to these carbs is usually 220, but the jet I've got here for Saudi Arabia was 270, so I stuck with that. Inside here, which you can't see, is another brass needle jet. The standard is 106, and I fitted a 106 because that's what was in the carb before. Uh, what else was going to tell you? I also bought a new throttle slide. You can buy hardened versions, but I couldn't get one there out of stock. And I put in there a new throttle needle as well. So I, basically, I put new components in the carb. Now, when I went to rebuild, rebuild it, it's not rocket science. You know, I used a good magnifying glass to make sure I cleaned it properly, but I failed to clean it properly, and I'll explain. So when I reassembled it, I didn't really understand how to adjust the float height. So I assembled it and I tried to start the bike. It started okay, but the next day when I came back out, I noticed the gasket, which would go inside here, I'm not gonna put it in now, the gasket the next one was soaking wet. And that's the sign basically that the float height is too high because when the, when the fuel sits in this bowl, basically where that lip is here, the float should sit about two millimeters below that float. And therefore, if your carburetor is sitting full of fuel, this gasket shouldn't get wet. 